Hey, congratulations, Kurt. Hey, thank you for uh, speaking with me for uh, this, uh, this film by Night's End. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to, uh, great to be here. Hey, not a problem. Hey, um, so let's start off with the easy question. Why you were attracted to a film, a home invasion film like By Night's End? <laughs> well, honest, to be honest, when I first got the script from Walker, I had no idea what it was going to be. So uh, I had met Walker maybe six months prior to him sending me the script for By Night's End, and we worked on a commercial together. And on that commercial, I played a news anchor. So completely different from, you know, the character and the storyline of what happened in My Night's End, right? So after that, when he approached me about doing this feature film, I really didn't know what the storyline was going to be like when he sent me the script and I read through it. And to answer your question of what attracted me to it, I mean, I grew up a huge action movie fan. So like my favorite movies growing up were like Terminator 2, Jurassic Park. I mean, I've seen both of those like 25 times. So like being that type of being a fan of those types of movies and then seeing this script that was just all action thriller, I could not have been more excited to work on that and was so thrilled that he uh, asked me to be a part of it. Wow. I, I didn't know you're such an action junkie uh, yourself because you, you, you've done so many different things uh, throughout your entire career. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, as an actor, especially when we're starting off in our careers, we're just taking whatever jobs that we can get. We're auditioning for everything, right? I'm not at the level where I can like pick and choose what I can do yet. But, um, but yeah, as, as a kid growing up, I mean, action movies were, were my jam. You know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, fight, fight, you know, martial arts movies, Bruce Lee and all that type of stuff. And then, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all of that, you know, growing up in that, in that time, that was, uh, that was what I loved. Do you, do you often get a lot of a uh, lead, uh, you know, character roles or because, because I've seen you in a lot of things before in a lot of supporting roles, but, uh, but I never seen, seen you in a lead role like this before. Yeah, so this was my very first lead role in a feature film. I've done some lead roles in short film projects, but for as far as a feature film goes, this was my first time. So it was an, it was an incredible experience. And I couldn't have asked for a better first time as a lead in a feature because this cast and crew was just incredible to work with. <laughs> so with, with this uh, newfound experience, how did you want to approach your character? Because he, your, your character was so... I want to put in the word desperate <laughs> throughout the entire movie. Well, th to be honest, there were um, a lot of, a, a, a lot of Mark was very slim, similar to me. And because he really wants to, he really, he feels like that he can find a solution in any situation. He wants to solve problems himself, even in kind of in the beginning of the movie before, you know, all hell breaks loose. Uh, he, you know, they're going through some financial trouble. Mark had lost his job. And when Heather asks him about it, he's kind of like, you know, it's going to be fine. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. it. Don't worry about it. And I kind of feel like I'm that same way as well. I'm the type of person that feels like I can solve any problem and to a fault, you know. So I think that ends up, you know, biting Mark in the ass <laughs> as he's trying to figure out this situation that and uh, keeps getting worse and worse as the night goes on so in that respect I could connect with Mark uh for sure so 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 you're saying that you would you would be like Mark if you discovered that there's treasure hidden in your house you would tear up your house <laughs> I, I I might I might not go into it to the extent that that uh, that they end up doing. I might have stopped a little <laughs> earlier on when uh, when all the craziness starts happening. But uh, but definitely when when I first hear about potential money being hidden in our house, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for it. <laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, you know I enjoyed about this film, and 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 it, and it's just uh, me because of as being an Asian American is because I don't usually see Asians in lead roles before. How does mm -hmm. it feel about? How do you feel about that? It it felt amazing, and honestly, this is a testament to Walker, testament to the producers for reaching out to me and asking me to be a part of it. Because, like I said, uh, as far as I know, the only thing that they knew as far as my experience 
prior to that was working on that commercial. So for them to have the confidence in me to pull off this type of role uh, was, it felt really great. And, it, and it's great for me to also be a part of that, uh, uh, that hopefully um, a trend going forward of seeing more Asian Americans in lead roles, especially Asian male characters, right, in, in these lead roles uh, that aren't just like a crazy rich Asians where the whole cast is Asian, right? Um, I loved seeing like the movie from a few years ago, John Cho's movie. Um, I can't remember what it was called. The one that, that, that uh, basically took place all on social media and he was trying to find uh, his missing daughter. Um, I, and uh, yeah, I didn't see the movie, but I know but it was critically acclaimed. I do know. That. Yeah, it was very good. It was fantastic. And he was great as the lead character in that movie as well. So um, that was very inspiring to me to see that. And then for me to be able to do this role and uh, hopefully inspire other Asian actors to um, to pursue these types of lead roles. I, I think it's great. It's because uh, um, because I looked through your filmography and it doesn't look like you you typically get cast in like those stereotypical Asian roles. I mean, that's that's basically a testament to your own career. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really glad that that has happened. Um, I've you know, we, we always have the worry when we're just getting into the industry that 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 we're going to be kind of typecast in that. But I think it's also speaks to uh, the changing climate in Hollywood, too, of opening up a lot of these roles for uh, more diverse, uh, uh, more of a diverse cast. Excellent. Well, let, let's talk about your on-screen wife of Michelle, Michelle Rose. How, oh, how is that like, uh, you know, basically portraying um, her husband who, uh, who seems to, she seems to kick ass when you don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in most of the movie, I'm not the one who's kicking ass. She's the one that's doing it. So it, it was fantastic watching her. And I, I didn't meet her until we got together for the table read. So that was my first time meeting Michelle. And, uh, and then once we got on set and I saw her actually perform, not only in her acting, but also in all of the stunts that she did herself, all of the fight scenes that she did herself. I mean, she's got some uh, incredible fight scenes that, you know, a really memorable one with Matt Laborde in the movie where they just go at it all. And they're like fighting all throughout the house. So uh, it, it, it was honestly uh, inspiring and kind of, uh, I was in awe when I was watching on the monitors when they were doing that fight scene, because I'm not a stunt person at all. And she's got a lot of that experience. So seeing them do that was, uh, was amazing. Oh, hold up. I've, I've read in your biography that you know jujitsu and nunchucks. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know how to fight yourself. I've done some jujitsu definitely in the past, uh, but not nothing on screen. And, uh, and I've, I've, when I was a teenager, I used to practice with nunchucks all the time. Uh, like I said, being an action movie fan, I watched Ninja Turtles a lot too. So <laughs> watching Michelangelo and wanting to be uh, a nunchuck master uh, brought me into that. But um, but I'm not the type of person that's getting thrown around on screen at all. Uh, so um, watching Michelle do that, I I'll, I'll leave that to, to her and Matt and all the other guys in the movie. Yeah, but as, a, as an action film junkie yourself and witnessing Michelle on set, doesn't that give you a desire that you want to do this yourself, um, get these type of roles? <laughs> uh, maybe like 20 years ago, I, I would have been all about like throwing myself around. Right now, I probably need a stunt double. I don't know if I can handle <laughs> getting thrown into walls and thrown on the ground and stuff like that. But I, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of these types of movies. I just don't know if I can do my own stunts the way a lot of these other actors do anymore. Excellent. Now let, let let's talk about the, the production itself because uh, because this all happens in a few hours in in you know in a single night. How mm -hmm. was the night shoots on that production? Was it was that fairly difficult? Because I I typically hear that's fairly difficult for a lot of actors. Yeah, it it was. It, it was hard for me, especially because I'm not great at, you know, adjusting my uh, 
my internal clock. I'm not great at sleeping during the day, even if I black out my room and everything like that, you know, put a mask over my eyes, I still can't really fall asleep during the day. So it's hard getting that extra sleep. So sometimes we'll just find times to go into the makeup room and sit in the cast chair and grab a, a few minutes of sleep on set if they're filming a scene without me. But uh, to be honest, when we were on set though, it, it really spoke to how well uh, the the cast or, or the crew had prepared everything because we were really on point especially because we also not only were we doing night shoots we um, had only I believe it was only a 12-day production so we had to get the entire movie shot in a matter of 12 days or 12 nights really and uh, to be able to do that they really had to do a ton of pre-production and make sure that they were on point for every single day of the shoot and they and they were and so it it was uh it made it a lot easier to not have a bunch of time just sitting around doing nothing while they were trying to figure everything out that rarely ever happened you know we were always just go 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 so kind of the adrenaline kicked in and was always there and especially being a part of an action movie you know that helped too because we were always running around so that helped us kind of stay awake for the whole thing yeah but uh but that also means you're with a 12 day shoot that also means your rehearsal time is also limited mm -hmm. i mean um do, do you yeah. enjoy that or or you could quickly adjust to that so we did a few rehearsals prior to uh production starting so that helped a ton because we got to sit down with walker and really talk through the scenes talk through especially the bigger scenes and how we were going to do them after that then once we were on set yeah you're absolutely right there were there was very little rehearsal that we could do i mean rehearsal was basically the first take right and then and when then we were just going to keep going from there but um one of the things that i kind of learned which i've heard of when i first started acting but since it was my first time uh acting as a lead character in a feature film and going through an entire storyline uh, you learn that one of the biggest challenges is that films are shot out of order. And because of that, sometimes, you know, you're doing one scene on, you know, day three, and then you don't pick up the scene immediately after that until like day 11. And by that point, you've forgotten what you did on day three. And you kind of have to get back into, you know, that mindset and that, that emotional state and all of that, all that type of stuff to, to make the continuity correct right, from going from scene to scene, because that's just one cut in the movie, whereas when we were filming, it was a, you know, two-week span. Well, you, 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 make, you make acting sound so difficult after you explain that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and that's one of the challenges, right, and so that, that's some, one of the things that as viewers of movies and TV shows, we don't really know about because we don't really think about, um, but all of those um, big movie stars, they have really perfected that because uh, for them to be able to carry on those scenes with like two or three weeks of a break in between and, and make it look seamless in the movie is um, really speaks to their talent. So, so this is in comparison to like when you take supporting roles like on, mm -hmm. on television and stuff, you, you could just instantaneously get into character and be done with it. Yeah, part of it is that part of it is that you're not a lot of times the supporting roles, you're not, uh, you know, too high on the emotional spectrum on either side. And another part of it is oftentimes you're only shooting one or two days and those days are, you know, uh, back to back. So you know exactly what you're doing. Oftentimes you're not uh, spread out between a, a long period of time. So now since you've got a taste of being in the lead role, I think you want more, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think any actor would love to to be able to really dive into these deep, deeper storylines and and uh, and really work with a meteor um, script and, and a character like this as well. So I, I would love to keep doing these. But at the same time, I, I also like being part of, you know, playing a part of a bigger project also has a, a ton of value and it feels it feels great to be um you know, even a, a minor part of something that can be uh, extremely, extremely big and reach a huge audience. Which, which speaking up because, uh, because I know uh, you were in an insatiable for, for a couple mm -hmm. of years and that, and I mean, how was that experience on, on that, uh, that show? That was amazing. And like you said before, like being, uh, seeing Asian actors 
as prominent as they are in that series. I mean, there were at least three Asian actors in that series. Oh, actually, by the end of the series, I think four or five Asian actors that were uh, at least on the guest star level or series regulars on that show. So Insatiable did a great job of like kind of um, uh, diversifying their cast in that respect. Um, and it, yeah, it was a, it was fantastic working on Insatiable. It was my first time working on a Netflix project. So that was really cool to, to be a part of that because Netflix is just, you know, especially right now during the pandemic, that's what everybody's doing right now is just sitting at home and watching Netflix, right? So it was uh, really cool uh, being a part of that. And I got to play the father of uh, the the actor Danny Kang, who plays um, Donald Choi. Um, I actually knew Danny before Insatiable. We uh, knew each other here in Atlanta. Uh, so when I found out that uh, he was cast and then they cast me as his dad, it was it was uh, really cool. Wow, that is, that sounds like a great experience. And I and I feel like Netflix is like practically the only ones that are really <laughs> pushing for things out there right now. Yeah, yeah, Netflix is doing a ton for sure. Well, the the other thing that I want to mention that uh, that that a lot of people love right now is that Cobra Kai. But you 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 got you you were brought on board when it was a YouTube series. Am I am I correct? I think that was the first season. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm surprised you knew that because a lot of people didn't know about Cobra Kai when it was just on YouTube. And then once uh, after season two, YouTube decided to go away with their uh, with their content and. Um, Netflix picked it up, and then once Netflix released it, then it reached a whole new uh, level of, of uh, uh, popularity. So, I yeah, I worked on the first season, a couple episodes of the first season when it was on YouTube, and uh, and now I'm hearing a lot more people uh, talk to me about Cobra Kai now that it's on Netflix. So it's, uh, that's really exciting. How 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 do you feel about that? That Cobra Kai, I mean. The first season was terrific when it was on YouTube, but somehow it's just more popular now just because of Netflix. And now yeah. everyone wants to talk to you about it. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, it, it's just, it's like anything. You have to, you have to reach the audience. I mean, I can make a movie right now and just put it on a DVD on my desk and nobody's ever going to watch it. So we have to, similar to uh, By Night's End, once we got distribution for the movie, we knew it was going to reach a much bigger audience than just telling our family and friends about it. So I can't be mad about it. I can't be mad about people not watching it on YouTube because they, they didn't really have the audience there. But Net, uh, Netflix already had the subscribers and we knew once that once it got released on Netflix, we didn't know that it was going to stay on number one for net on Netflix for like two or three weeks. But uh, we knew it was going to reach a, a much bigger audience by that point. So I'm, I'm, you know, I was really excited about it. I'm, I'm really, I feel really blessed to be a part of Cobra Kai. And that's another thing, uh, being an 80s kid and watching the Karate Kid growing up and being a part of Cobra Kai, uh, and the, the kind of reboot of that story was really, I mean, it's, it's been kind of a dream come true. Uh, another, another story similar to that. I had a, a small part on the series Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. And in my scene, I played a lawyer and uh, I was the lawyer to Henry Thomas's character on that show. And Henry Thomas played Elliot in E.T. And that was another, you know, another thing that I grew up watching. So that's, a, that's something that I've been really uh, amazed about in my acting career is to be able to work with these people that I grew up seeing on my tv and on my movie theater screens i don't know that uh, that series still give me still give me nightmares uh, just, just just thinking <laughs> about the hanging lady <laughs> yeah yeah well that they, they have season two coming out haunting of bly manor i'm excited to watch that i'm a i'm a horror movie uh, buff for sure i love i love the scary stuff yeah so um so in in the case for yourself how did you got your start into acting why how did you get the acting bug? And so this is a crazy story. I never did any acting growing up at all. Nothing in high school, nothing in college. I actually went to college for computer science and engineering. I, after college, I you know, went straight into the workforce and uh, worked in a corporate job as a software developer and did that for many years. And I actually just kind of fell into acting by 
by way of just wanting to do something after work, me and my best friend from high school, we were both working corporate jobs at the time uh, back in 2008. And we would get together after work all the time and just go to happy hours. And that got kind of old, just going to happy hours and going to drink. So we found, uh, we started looking for things to do after work and we happened to find this acting school. And this was when I was living in Cleveland, Ohio. So we jumped into that school just for, for me, it was just for fun. I had no uh, intention of trying to do a career change at the time at all. And I was doing it just for fun. And then also being in Cleveland, Ohio, I didn't think anybody was making any money acting. And I was totally naive to the fact that, you know, people shoot local commercials and industrial videos and those types of things. And there are jobs like that for actors out there. And uh, I had to join this acting class to learn that that was possible. And that's when I started, you know, I just started taking classes because I liked the classes. Eventually I signed with my first agent in Ohio. I started auditioning for the local small projects here and there and started booking here and there. And this was while I still had my full-time job. So uh, it wasn't until 2016 when I decided, you know what, I wanna really see if I can take this further. And I moved down here to Atlanta, Georgia from Cleveland, Cleveland to, to uh, try to pursue film and television a little bit more. So what, what do you think so far? A great, a great move on your part. <laughs> I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I think it's uh, now looking back to my job as a software developer, it seems like another lifetime. I, I, I can't even imagine being back in that position anymore. I love what I'm doing right now. Do you, do you prefer uh, television or do you prefer like uh, indie film like format like this? Uh, I really, so, and it's hard to say, like I said earlier, as actors, we just want to do, we want to do everything. So it's hard to say what we prefer. Um, I'll tell you what I love about films. And this is because um, I just love being part of the acting community. And when um, in my community of friends here as actors, whenever one of us has a movie coming out, um, we will try to go to the, to the theater together as a, as a group and go uh, watch the movie together. And there's honestly, there's nothing better than see, sitting in a movie theater and seeing one of your friends pop up on the big screen. You know, I have friends that were in um, some of the big Marvel movies. Uh, a buddy of mine was in Avengers Endgame and being able to sit in a movie theater, a packed movie theater like that on the biggest movie ever made and seeing your friend's face pop up in the movie is an incredible feeling. You know, it's great to see, uh, you know, people pop up on, on our television shows as well and in commercials as well, but nothing beats the big screen. Nothing beats that at all. <laughs> is is there any franchise you're, that's on your wish list that uh, that you would love be a part of that someday that you would see your face on the big screen? Star Wars for sure. <laughs> it's got to be Star Wars. You know, I'm I'm very much and like I said, an '80s kid and very nostalgic in that respect. So I I was uh, super blessed to be part of Cobra Kai. Uh, super blessed to work with Henry Thomas in Haunting of Hill House. And, but, but number one would be Star Wars. I don't care what, they don't even have to show my face, man. <laughs> I, I, I would be, I think I, I've told people before, I would be a Wookiee in Star Wars if they want to, you know, put me in the full costume. I, I'm probably not tall enough to be a Wookiee, but that's fine. I'll, I'll play a, a young cousin of Chewbacca or something like that. Absolutely. And, you know, if, you, if, if there's a desire to, you can make it happen. I, yeah. that, that's what they always say. Well, let me yeah. wrap it up with uh, one more thing because, uh, because it's funny that uh, we're, ta we're talking to each other um, during times like this uh, via, via mm -hmm. Zoom, in fact. Um, mm -hmm. How are you staying creative and sane during, uh, during times like this? So uh, funny you should ask, I actually just uploaded a YouTube video right before we got on this call. I've been staying creative uh, by, with my YouTube channel. I actually created a YouTube channel back in 2015, but I wasn't really consistent with it. I posted a few videos and then I took like a five year break and never posted anything again. But right when the uh, pandemic started and uh, we were all kind of stuck at home, I think uh, the silver lining of it for me was that 
well, I'm just going to go back to uh, creating YouTube videos because I have nothing but time now. So I've been uploading to about uh, two YouTube videos every every week. Uh, my YouTube channel is called the Acting Career Center, and I basically help young actors like w where I was back in uh, 2008, knowing nothing about the industry. Uh, I know when I first started, I would have loved to have information like what I'm putting out on my YouTube channel about how to get started in, in the industry, what an agent is, you know, what a casting director is, and just the type of general questions that a lot of people have that uh, when when they're first getting started in their careers. Wow, I think that that sounds that sounds like a very excellent, especially for those people who who wants to start in this career. So, great. yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> well, hey, congratulations once again for uh, by by night's end, and thank you uh, for uh, for speaking with me. And uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing you on more lead roles in the future. Thank you for having me, Gig, and, and yeah, I totally look forward to speaking with you again when that happens. Excellent. Hey, bye now. All right. See ya.